So with income inequality, increasing density, uh, and the high cost of land, especially in New York, um, which you know best, some are concerned that luxury residential tall buildings are being used as investments by absentee owners and that this is creating problems for the reasons above. Do you think we should legislate any special uh, residency requirement or tax or anything like that to stall or uh, to curb this trend? I don't believe we want to discourage uh, people from buying apartments. What I believe we want to do is encourage construction of low-income housing and rental housing and that when people build these high-income expensive buildings, they should be forced to contribute also to low-income construction, which will bring down the cost of land and make it possible to build rental housing. Specifically how everyone, developers who build luxury high-rises should have to contribute to, what, a general fund for building it? Right now in New York City, uh, there's an 80-20 program so that if you build rental, uh, you build 20% low-income housing. But if you build a condo, there's no requirement to build low-income housing. So I think the way to make it uh, more equal is to have a requirement for 20% housing, no matter what type of building you build. What do you think is the most under-addressed issue in tall building design development management today? And uh, what would you do to address it? I think the most under-addressed issue is the safety of these buildings. and. Uh, uh, the way to address the issue of people's concerns about safety is more education on just how safe these, these buildings are and how uh, they can be evacuated without issues. So education to the, the public? To the, educating the public, yes. Hmm. About what specifically? That the buildings are safe and that they can be evacuated uh, safely. Hmm. And do you think there's concern, undue concern about fire safety or seismicity or what exactly are people? I believe people are concerned about uh, evacuating s safely and also about the seismic mm -hmm. issues and wind issues uh, that in these tall buildings. It seems like kind of maybe an innate thing that people might be skeptical of no matter how much information they have or do you think this is just a matter of communicating? I think it's a matter of communicating. It's, it is there are people who you'll never convince to get into these buildings, but there are a lot of people who just uh, are concerned about it who don't know, don't have the information at hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking back on your career, you're receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award tonight, um, is there anything about it that would have surprised your younger self? Well, my younger self would be very surprised about uh, our involvement in the World Trade Center. Um, I was opposed to having it built uh, in, the, in, at the <clears throat> in the time frame that it was. Uh, and also, my father um, was very much opposed to the World Trade Center, and uh, I sort of followed mm -hmm. in his footsteps until uh, they decided to go forward, and then we volunteered to be part of the uh, process. Why were you opposed, and, and what changed your mind? I was opposed to the World Trade Center because of the, uh, as is the first World Trade Center, there was too much office space being delivered at once. And the same thing is happening over again with uh, one World Trade Center, four World Trade Center, and now three World Trade Center, all being built at the same time. The uh, government decided to go forward with one World Trade Center, and we felt we were the best ones to help them get it finished and get it uh, rented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now looking forward, uh, you've had most of your experience in New York City. What trends in, in the city in real estate are you most excited about? We're finally uh, crossing the, the river, going to a foreign country in Queens <laughs> with a new project uh, in Astoria at Hallett's Point. And uh, it's very exciting for us. My father was well known for saying he went by property that he couldn't walk to, and this one would be very difficult to walk to. And you see there's that development of Roosevelt Island with Technion and Cornell University, and then Astoria's got, and uh, Long Island City have a couple, there's a Citibank Tower right there, right? Is there a tall building, is that a tall building frontier in New York City? Well, there the tall building frontiers is on 57th Street and <laughs> uh, Central Park. But uh, uh, along the, uh, Queens waterfront, there are a number of 
uh, fairly tall buildings, and the Citibank building was built, uh, I think, 15 years or so ago. Mm -hmm. Stood out by itself for very many years, but now the residential towers are being built around it. Mm -hmm. How important are environmental concerns for developers, really, or for you? Um, you know, is conservation a value in, in real estate circles, or is it more of an afterthought, a selling point? Uh, I don't think, I think it's a very important part of, certainly is an important part of what we do uh, at the Durst organization. We've been involved in uh, um, uh, environmental responsibility for 25 years now. Um, built the first high-rise green office building at Four Times Square and uh, the first Platinum Lead building uh, in New York City, one bank of the, well, one Bryant Park, Bank of America Tower. And it's it imbued in everything we do that we try and make the building as environmentally responsible as possible. And it's really, doing that is really a way of making it a, a, an efficient building and a building that people want to work in. Mm -hmm. I know that One Bank of America got some flack for being lead platinum design, but then because of the use being so high tech, actually taking a lot of energy and even more than I think the average per square meter, square foot. Bank of America Tower <coughs> has five floors of intense energy use, and uh, we have a cogen plant that uh, produces about 80% of the power that's used and because it's uh, on site, it operates and is uh, cogen. It operates at uh, 70 to 80 percent efficiency as a pair compared to um, the uh, utility power, mm. which is about 30 percent. Mm. In addition, many of the buildings we're compared to are use less power because they have 50 to 60 percent occupancy. Mm -hmm. I mean. The, the idea of comparing buildings by how much power they use is just a, a bad metric to be using. It should be by density or occupant per square foot. And by that measure, we come out very well. And by accounting for the life cycle, I guess, emissions or energy use here. Yes. Cogen being several times more efficient than burning coal and piping it in from wherever it's coming from. Correct, yes. Okay. A lot of people have been talking about New York becoming a playground for the rich. Do you think it is? Uh, not at all. There's uh, uh, what eight million people, and uh, you go to area. It's <clears throat> it's now a a, f a family um, uh, city. You go any place, uh, and you see mothers with strollers, fathers with strollers, young kids. My uh, grandkids all live in in uh, in New York and uh, Midtown and the city has changed. When my kids were, were grown, were born, we had to move out of the city because it just wasn't suitable. But now it's a great place for children and you see lots of families. So hmm. uh, I, I don't believe it's, it's a playground for the rich. <laughs>